There's not a lot of energy in the room, is there? <laughs> uh, so we're, we're just going to start things off uh, with just we're just going to sing together, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, just to get you all going. So here we go. Oh, I, we, you don't mind the key of F, do you? <laughs> no? Okay, cool. Here we Can't even. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. No, 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 no. Listen, I can see about 20% of you already not committing. <laughs> I've told you that we're going to do head, shoulders, knees and toes to get the energy up in the room, and you're all looking at me as if I've taken a fucking shit on the stage. <laughs> I've picked a good song. We all know the words. It's been a while since we sang it together. Let's admit it, it's been a long old pandemic. The least you can do is fucking join in. I can't do this on my own. I do not have the charisma to pull off an hour's show by myself. It's also very well lit. And I don't like my gigs like that. Because for the purposes of the filming, they're like, well, we have to see people's reactions. So it looks like people are having fun. But I prefer to perform in absolute darkness. I don't want to see a single one of you fucking weirdos looking at me. If I catch you not singing, you're going to come up on stage and you're going to do the dance in front of your stupid friends. And trust me, it's less funny than you think it will be. I do this a lot. In fact, I do the dance every day before I go out on stage. I do it in the green room to see what it looks like. And tell you what, it's dehumanising. <laughs> I did a show in Norwich. Big old venue. Big old venue. Man in the second row, called by my bluff. He came up on stage. He did the dance. He did the dance in front of his family. He did it in front of his wife and his two children. That was two years ago. To this day, they've not looked him in the eye. <laughs> One, two, one, two, three, four. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And my back is a bow and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Strange gig, isn't it? Strange gig. <laughs> I... I'm going to be real honest with you. That is for me. I find that funny. I find it funny that you come to watch a nice stand-up comedy and then you've ended like five minutes in, you're like, I think we're... We still going to head, shoulders, knees and toes at a man wearing a keyboard. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I like that. No, nah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I hate that song. It's the only song about the body you've got and it's an absolute disgrace. I'll take you through it step by step. First section. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And you're thinking already, yeah, it's an absolute banger. <laughs> you had four words there to outline the basic premise of a human body. You've gone for head, shoulders, knees and toes. I can't wait to see where the song goes next. I can't wait to hear about the arms. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about the torso. Second section. <laughs> Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. It's very familiar, isn't it? <laughs> Think to yourself, if this song is about the entire body, and we're already repeating ourselves, how long is this thing going to take? <laughs> You're thinking, wait, wait for part three, part three be good. And the part three goes, and eyes and ears and mouth and nose. And that is the end of the song. <laughs> N number one, we'd already covered the head. <laughs> Hadn't we? Hadn't we? When we all stand together, head, shoulders, knees and toes, weren't imagining a head without Eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. It's not a song about a fucking scallop, is it? <laughs> Secondly, 
neglected the entire area between the shoulders and the knees. <laughs> this is even a song about a human anymore. At this point, head, shoulders, knees and toes could also be a song about the front half of a cat. <laughs> It's a disgrace. <laughs> so thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Huge Davies. This is my show. It's called The Car Park. Why is it called The Car Park? I hear you scream. <laughs> uh, the Car Park is a musical that I wrote and performed in 2019 at the Edinburgh uh, Fringe Festival. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun musical. It's light-hearted musical. You know, it's, it's, it's classic me. <laughs> And this musical uh, starts with a man that I knew a very, very long time ago. Walking down the street with my dad, he holds my hand, I look up, it's not my dad, it's just a random man, he puts me in a van. <laughs> Part one, <laughs> part two, can I? The random man pulls off a mask, it's actually my dad. We both laugh and drive off down the road to an orphanage. He spots me for a bike. <laughs> There's 24 parts. <laughs> The orphanage was just a dream I wake up in my bed But someone's painted all the windows black I'm in a sack, I'm still in a stranger's van <laughs> That is about as much of the musical I can perform uh, without an actual van in the venue. <laughs> See, when I performed it at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. It, the show's not just called The Car Park, it's a musical called The Car Park, about a car park, like set in, set in a car park. <laughs> so the whole thing was in a car park. <laughs> and then we're, we're here. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're not in a car park. I don't know what to, I don't to say. I... We... I can't... Do you understand? There's no... There's no car park. We're not at a car park. We're at a theatre, a lovely theatre, and it's ruined everything. Do you understand what I'm saying? What's, what's your name? Julian. Julian? Julian. Let's imagine you were organising this comedy special. Let's say you were in charge. Let's imagine that you called me up maybe about a month ago and you said, Huge, we loved your show, The Car Park. And I went, the car park? The musical called The Car Park, about a car park set in a car park. You went, that's the one. We'd love to record that for an hour's comedy special for the nice television. We'd love you to do that. And go, oh, brilliant. I'll see you there. I'll see you in a month. When I turned up here <laughs> at two o'clock today for my tech rehearsal, where do you imagine that I'd be imagining I'd be performing? What kind of performance space do you reckon? I've been... Sainsbury's car park. Sainsbury's... You're right, there's a car park out there, isn't there, Julian? There's a big old car park out there outside the venue. You know what, Julian? Maybe if you were organising this comedy special, there'd be more people on the fucking balcony. I can see 15 seats unoccupied on the back. We were going to film up there. No one's fucking turned up. You know what? There's probably 15 people in London somewhere fucking in a car park waiting for a musical to begin. This is a disgrace. This is the worst gig I've ever done in my whole... 24-part musical, gone. I'll read you out the other section so you know what you, you could have been watching. Uh, so uh, here's a, here we go. Uh, uh, part four, escape the van. <laughs> part five, hide in the park. Part six, seek help from a stranger. Could this be my dad? <laughs> Part seven, it's not my dad. I'm now in another van. <laughs> part eight, escape the van. Part nine, seek refuge in a car park. Part 10, get help from a traffic warden. Parts 11 and 12, it's the original stranger. I'm back in the first van. <laughs> part 12, 
part 13, except the van. The van's your life now. I exit the stage. Part 14, interval. I re-enter the car park in an ice cream van. I hand out Soleros. We bond as an audience. We bond as friends. Part 15, the interval is over. I'm being sold at a car boot sale. It reminds everyone of a slave auction and destroys all of the goodwill I just created in the interval. Part 16, someone recognises me at the car boot sale. Part 17, it's my dad. What a plot twist. Part 18, the stranger sells me and the van to my dad. Part 19, my dad runs a stranger over with the van. That's classic dad. <laughs> Part 20, we perform a 20-minute percussion instrumental in which we're banging different parts of the van, like in the hit musical stomp. My favourite section of the show, so I had to lose that. <laughs> Part 21, we inspect the body of the stranger. Part 22, they're wearing a mask. Part 23, take the mask off. Part 24, it's my mum, curtains, end of the show. So... <laughs> yeah. So instead of trying to write a new musical in the time given, instead I'm going to tell you my backstory, which is set in Taiwan, which is where I'm originally from. And it's quite a harrowing story, full of loss and betrayal, and it's not very funny, but it does, it does last an hour. <laughs> and I find that very difficult, not because I just find it very difficult to sort of talk about where I'm from and that kind of stuff, but also because, as someone who primarily writes musicals, I had to completely reinvent myself as a, as a storyteller. But musicians reinvent themselves all the time. For example, um, uh, do you know the, the band Daft Punk? Yeah, yeah. Well, don't speak for everyone. You know. If you're not familiar with Daft Punk, essentially they're, they're two DJs who wear space helmets to make them seem more futuristic. Which I think is great. I'm quite like that as a comedian. You know, People say that about me. I'm quite futuristic in the sense that... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not funny now. <laughs> but I could be funny. You know, in a bit. Get a lot of people telling me that I'm, I'm, I'm futuristic. I get a lot of fan mail telling me that I'm futuristic. I had an email just the other day that said, we just want to let you know that when you stormed off saying the crowd was terrible, the next comedian came on and we couldn't stop laughing. I'd be like, welcome to the future. That's a classic huge Davies payoff. <laughs> but it's classic. It's classic. You know, yeah, uh, futuristic music was cool, man. Until one band came along, started doing their own dystopian song about the future. And that song ruined futuristic music forever. And that song went a little bit like this. I said I've been to the year 3000. Not much has changed, but they live underwater. Yeah, come on. And your great, great, great granddaughter Come on! It's pretty fun It's pretty fun Now that to me is the most depressing song I've heard in my whole life <laughs> To recap That's a song about someone from the year 2002 Going to the year 3000 To have sex With your great, 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 great granddaughter yeah? Number one You go to year 3000 And everything's underwater Maybe the rest of the song should be about climate change. <laughs> That's like our equivalent of Neil Armstrong going to the moon. We go, Neil, what was the moon like? What did you see up there? There must be so much stuff when he went to the moon. Oh, well, I'll tell you about the moon. <laughs> I went to the moon. I went to the moon, yeah. And there was no gravity But I saw some rocks that looked just like some titties No <laughs> That's my great-great-great-granddaughter It's so good about that, mate You're gonna sleep with my relatives, you gotta keep these things to yourself I thought this was a fun song about time travel, not Russell Brand the musical <laughs> And for those of you who've not done the maths, for it to be possible in the year 2002 to even have a great-great-great-granddaughter in the year 3000, you're going to have to spread 1,000 years over five generations. <laughs> that means if she was alive, and I hope to God she was, mate, <laughs> Thank you.
if you spread out the years, average them out, she's going to be minimum... Like, that's like two centuries old. At this point, she is the oldest woman in the world. Let me paint you a picture. She's in a hospice. She's surrounded by her friends, her family. She's, she's living off a drip, boys. Her bones are literally dust at this point. Give us some goddamn dignity in death. 2002 was the year the Tyson Yacht had busted. What's it like in year 3000? And the best answer you could have got was, well, everybody may have drowned, but we still managed to gangbang a 200-year-old record breaker. <laughs> Not my future, I'll tell you that for free. Yeah. That song was detrimental to Daft Punk, you know. <laughs> detrimental. Futuristic music wasn't cool anymore. And not a lot of people know this, but that song actually caused a rift within Daft Punk. And in 2002, the band split up, right? One of them remained as Daft Punk, doing music about the future, wearing a space helmet. The other started wearing a hood, doing music from the 16th century, performing as uh, Daft Monk. <laughs> do you like Gregorian chanting? <laughs> yeah, you do? Well, you love Daft Monk then, it's like this. Do you, do you like it? Yeah. I think you might be the only one. Not a floor filler, I'll say that much. But top five favorite songs to put over a sacrifice, hands down. Hands down. The Gregorian chanting's not as popular as it used to be, you know? Duff Monk's doing a lot of smaller venues. I mean, you know, he's doing a lot of uh, Tudor-themed weddings. Ever been to a Tudor-themed wedding? Yeah, you have? Yeah, you, you would remember. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's something you, yeah, I think, that was a weird one, I think, yeah. Well, well as you know, it, it sort of starts off like this. That goes on for about an hour. It's a pretty bleak affair, it's a bleak affair. But Darth Mum, he's just stalling for about 55 minutes. But I do think it's a nice surprise at the end of the gig. There's a payoff. I don't even know you're watching Daft Punk until the beat kicks in. It's like this. <laughs> praying harder, praying better, do it faster. Makes us humble, praising him forever after. Our worship's never over. Bit of Daft Monk there for you. Bit of Daft Monk. <laughs> Darth Monk was lucky, man. Managed to get out of there, reinvent himself before it was too late. Other musicians are not so lucky. For example, the musician who composed this song. <laughs> Does anyone know what that song is called? Any takers? What do you, what do you think? What, what do you think it might be called? What would your first thought be? What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circus Monkey? Circus Monkey? I don't know where, I, I where the monkeys come from. I don't know. I don't like the circus you've been going to, quite honestly. I think they've... Half, half a good guess. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's circusy. That's fair to say. Uh, I, I, I want to let you know, and you can Google this after the show's finished, that song... It's called Entry of the Gladiators. <laughs> that song is called Entry of the Gladiators. <laughs> the composer heard that, thought about it, was like, yeah, I think that'll be the gladiators coming in, here they are. <laughs> and his friends were like, listen, mate, your best friends are your honest friends, and I've got to be honest with you right now, it's got more of a clown vibe. <laughs> and I know you set out to write a song about a gladiator, and that's cool, but what's happened is you've written a song about the circus, and that's happened to us all, let's be fair. <laughs> Don't worry about that, you're the circus guy, and we'll just move on, and we'll never talk about this ever again. And he went, yeah, the circus, yeah, 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 so yeah, of death. <laughs> here they come, all ten of them, climbing out a mini cooper, here they are. <laughs> 
Have you seen the back catalogue of that composer? Oh man, every single song is wrong. Here's his uh, his version of Schindler's List. He goes. It's National Anthem. This one's called National Anthem. Goes... <laughs> She's just a small town girl and living in a big old palace. <laughs> and of course, uh, everyone's personal favourite is, of course, the Tally Tubby's theme tune. Go... Fair to him, though, that was the, uh, the season finale during Dipsy's funeral. <laughs> God bless. God bless. God bless. Entry of the Gladiators, it's too fun, a song. Four Gladiators. It's fun at any tempo. Speed it up, it's on on a chair, having a great time on cocaine. It's like... <laughs> too, too, too much. Slow it down, it's on on a chair, having a great time at a Jewish wedding. It's like... Two. <laughs> you don't like that, you'll like nothing, mate. Honestly, honestly. <laughs> Much better than the songs we have for gladiators nowadays. Ever seen a, a gladiator die before? No? Well, you, you can see this in films like uh, Troy or, or 300 or, you know, even uh, a, a gladiator. <laughs> Anytime someone gets killed by a sword, they'll fall to their knees in slow motion. For some reason, this will happen. It'll be like this again. It's depressing. I find it very depressing. They say your life flashes before your eyes when you die. If I heard that whilst I was being killed to death in an arena with swords, I'd tell you what, I'd feel very glass half empty about the whole thing. <laughs> you don't hear that in casualty, do you? <laughs> you don't get someone falling for a ladder in Bristol in slow motion like... <laughs> Ted walking through a field, touching all the wheat with his fingers, like... <laughs> you gotta start off slow, and be, then you can get fun at the end. Say, for example, this classic scene, you could be, you'd be like... My name is Maximus Decimus Marilius, leader of the Northern Armies, loyal to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, Husband to a murdered wife. And I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what I've. I don't want to end up like that guy. So what I've uh, managed to do is I've managed to completely reinvent myself for this backstory. Now, if you've seen me live before, you know I like to incorporate a live keyboard into my performances. I think that's a great thing to do, a very fun thing for me to do. But I think for the purposes of this backstory, I think it's inappropriate and doesn't really uh, suit the narrative. So I'm going to be taking a big risk tonight, and I'm going to take a step away uh, from playing the keyboard and a step towards uh, playing the harp. I'm already very good at the harp, I will say that. 
When I first started learning the harp, everyone's like, it's actually a very complicated instrument, very difficult technique. I'm finding it very similar to playing the keyboard, I have to say. Very similar. Best thing about playing the harp is, of course, there's only ever one song you want to play in the harp. Uh, do you know it's quite a famous song on the harp? It's called Looking Back Into The Past. Do you know the song? Looking Back... You don't... You don't... You know it. Wait, does everyone... Looking Back Into The Past... You don't... You did... <sighs> All right. It's, I think it's one of those ones where you hear it and you, re you remember it. So this is the Looking Back Into The Past on the harp. So here we go. Looking Back Into The Past. See, you're like, oh yeah, I do remember actually. Guaranteed that's the first time you've ever remembered something. Whilst hearing the sound of remembering something. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah. Hey man. Hard, hard song to play, do you reckon? Hard song? Yeah, you're right. Very hard, one of the hardest ones. Because every time you start trying to practice that song, you get distracted by all the memories of your youth. You're like, oh, the van. <laughs> good memory. Good memory. Always a good memory when you hear that. Never a bad memory. It's like, you know, when you're talking to someone and they're like, what did you get up to on the weekend? You're like, I went to Ikea. You can see it in their eyes. Can't you? You go, oh, I get... oh. <laughs> Furniture. <laughs> and meatballs, what a shop. Never a bad memory. So now your grandfather coming over to you being like, did I ever tell you about all my friends that died in the war? You're like, uh, no. He goes, let me tell you about a time in which I killed a man with my bare hands. Here we go. What a day, what a war. Come on. You know? That is why you never get anyone who has PTSD learning the harp to try and forget. Never. Never. Especially with this harp. This harp's broken. You think it's bad on the way down? Try it. Try going up again past top C. It's like this. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> Ruins every single song I try and play on the harp. Is a, a, a bit of the snowman here. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. I, I tried Titanic. Possibly even even worse. Here we go. Um, um. Into that. Um, um, the only song that does work, of course, uh, is uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. So this is the only song. I, I, you know what? You know what? This could be. We could maybe all do this together. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah let's all sing together. Okay, here we go. So, hang on. Mama. I said this would be fun if we all sang together. <laughs> Get a bit of energy back in the room. L listen. I was told to do this bit because I was told that there's not a lot of joy in the show, given the fact that almost every joke is about killing someone. <laughs> These are the bits of the show that you're going to really got to hold on to if you're not enjoying it. And I'm looking at you. <laughs> there's a joke in about 10 minutes about Wallace and Gromit that's going to turn this room into a real dark place. <laughs> I don't like saying that joke anymore. I did that right, like two years ago and it's aged badly. <laughs> but it's important to the show and I have to say it. When that happens, you'll be looking back at this like it was a fucking childhood holiday in Cornwall. <laughs> How many of you have seen Queen live before? No? Well, this is as close as it's going to fucking get. <laughs> So just fucking stack in. Here we <laughs> Mama just killed a man 
Put a gun against this. Give it that. Short, short and sweet. That's how I like it. Short and sweet. Yeah. So. So. Uh, can't do the musical anymore. Uh, I'm going to do my backstory instead. Uh, I've reinvented myself, and yeah, I think we're yeah we're about halfway through now, so we'll, we'll get on with the backstory. So here we go. So. Halfway through, man. <laughs> Halfway through. All I'm saying is it a better show? We could be having Soleros right now. <laughs> I was, honestly, I was going to say, Here, there's the interval, and I was going to come back in like this. Back off, like you'll be sitting down like that, though. and I was kind of coming like this. Okay. Yeah. Fucked it. <laughs> Fucked it. I'm furious. I'm, you know what? I think I'm going to walk home like this, actually. <laughs> Just to really disappoint all the local children, you know? <laughs> Fuck the kids! <laughs> Any parents in today? Give us a cheer. Any parents in today? Give us a cheer. Yeah, fucky kids. <laughs> Fuck your kids hard. I, you know what? It's, it was weird, because of all the things I've ever said, that is my catchphrase, which is a shame, isn't it? <laughs> Try to put that in a mug. I think it's got quite a sinister tone, that song, isn't it? Yeah. What's it? I think it's weird that parents talk to yourselves. You'll be in the park, having a lovely time with your family, and you'll hear this in the trees, you'll be like... Be like, yeah. I'm going to send my kids towards that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go buy a treat from the creepiest looking vehicle I've, I've seen in my whole entire life. Yeah. Go buy a nice treat from a man in a bow tie who's having an actual breakdown. Yeah. Good idea. Very creepy. Very creepy. If you, if you heard this coming from your house... Like... Like your loft. <laughs> You'd burn your entire house down, wouldn't you? <laughs> For context, if you put this beneath it like this, try this. Listen to this. Oh. <laughs> Incidentally, that is also the same music an ice cream truck man hears every time he closes his eyes. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Next time you see an ice cream truck man, you'll sit watching very closely. He'll be in the van, right? A little girl will come up to the van. She'll say, uh, uh, Can I have a 99 flake? He says, Of course you can. That'll be £4.50. <laughs> Welcome to the politics section. <laughs> Money's getting more, isn't it? End of the politics section. <laughs> she'll come up, to the, come up to the van, she'll say, can I have an ice, uh, ice cream? She'll say, of course you can, little girl, of course you can. He'll hand her the ice cream, she'll say, thank you, ice cream and shut man, have a lovely day. And he'll say, uh, you're very welcome, you have a lovely day too, and, and, and careful as you go. <laughs> Don't think about the murders. So, I'll begin the backstory very quickly. Uh, very, very quickly. Um, so, as I said, uh, this is a, a backstory about uh, Thailand, which is where I'm originally from. And, <laughs> and I, 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 no, I, do, I, do I do actually love Thailand. Um, I love everything about Thailand, uh, the cuisine especially. I actually, before I was a comedian, I used to have a day job in which I worked in, in Thai cuisine. It's quite a, quite a weird job. If you're not familiar with what I do, it's quite specific. What I do is I, I drive all up and down the country Right, and then if I find like a really packed out Thai restaurant, I'll go into that restaurant, I'll find the general manager, and I'll, I'll sort of just uh, stare at him like this. I'll be like, <laughs> I 
so that everyone in that restaurant thinks that I'm from a rival Thai restaurant. <laughs> Not a big earner. <laughs> but the only thing that calms me down, the only thing. <laughs> quickly, just before, oh, we have to, okay. So quickly before I do, I do the backstory, there are just three quick warnings uh, before I start. Um, so the first warning is that there's any, um, any racists in. <laughs> it's honestly best if you just leave at this point. Um, the backstory is set in Asia and that could be quite triggering if, if you are like a racist. And I honestly, there's no judgment here. If you are a racist, in a, almost, I kind of respect you in a way. It's hard, it's a hard road out there, you know what I mean? Hard time to be, a, you know. So if you have a problem with any, I, no judgment, you just, all you have to do is you just have to get up and go, and you know, no judgment here. And I don't want any of you to judge, because, you know, and I, right, I say this, right, uh, not, not yet, not, obviously not just to stop people from going to the toilet. <laughs> But, you know, I'm an Asian. You know, I'm gonna be doing Asian things, I'm gonna be saying Asian things, I'm gonna be doing some pretty crazy Asian accents. <laughs> it's, it's what Asians are for. And uh, there's some pretty rocky stories about racism. I remember the earliest uh, time I ever got racially abused. Um, uh, I remember, so, I, but I, okay. So I had this friend called uh, Mark, right? And we were best friends and we were in a band together. And we were, yeah, we had a fight, right? And he raised his voice and I raised my voice and uh, things kind of got out of hand. And basically he, he, called me a, he called me a chink, right? And I don't really like using that word, um, but I think it's important to use that word and it's important to you know, say it for you guys to, to, to hear that word. Because what happened next is something that I'll never forget. Because back then, right, I was so young, I wasn't really, I didn't really realize that was a racial slur. But I had heard of the expression uh, chink in the chain. So I, th I thought Mark was in, sorry. I, I thought Mark was implying that I wasn't a team player. <laughs> so I said to Mark, I, gra I grabbed him and I said, listen Mark, I'm going to try harder for you. <laughs> I'm going to be putting my weight a little bit more on this whole thing. Because I love you. I love you as a brother. And you love me as a brother, and that's what brothers are for. And I won't let this band go down the toilet like everything else in my life. I'm going to stick with this, Mark, and you're going to stick with me, and that's what we're going to do. And then I grabbed Mark, I kissed him on the cheek, and I said, I whispered in his ear and said, it's just me and you, brother. Then I walked out of the room. And he was so confused, he never spoke to me ever again. <laughs> so, you know, that's, some, that's sometimes how it goes. That's how it goes. Second warning about the show is there's going to be a lot of uh, dream sequences. Do you, do you like a dream sequence, man? No. Oh. A dream sequence. It's sort of a bit in a film where there's a dream. You like that bit? Like Inception. I guess that whole, the whole movie is a dream sequence, <laughs> in a way, yeah. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. This is almost nothing like Inception. <laughs> but I think it's very uh, difficult to write a good dream sequence when your dreams are as mundane as mine. I have four recurring mundane dreams uh, every single night. Uh, the first recurring mundane dream I have is, uh, is I, uh, I want a double-decker chocolate bar. So what I do is I go to the 24 hour shop where I live, I buy a double decker chocolate bar, I go back to my flat, I eat the chocolate bar, and then I wake up. <laughs> so what I do is I go to the 24 hour shop where I live, I buy a double decker chocolate bar, go back to my flat, I eat the chocolate bar, then I've lived my dream. <laughs> the second recurring my dream I have is I, uh, I, I win a lifetime trip to Japan with my best friends, uh, but it's just fine. 
To be fair to me, it's where I'm originally from, and I find it very boring. <laughs> the third uh, recurring mundane dream I have is I'm approached by both Wallace and Gromit, who finger, then kill me. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I've told you about this bit. I'm the one in the dream every single goddamn day. Don't look at me like that. Look at me. That doesn't even sound boring or mundane. That sounds terrifying and an absolute nightmare. Yeah, but what you don't know is that dream is actually being filmed in stop motion, so the whole thing takes months. <laughs> and the fourth dream is the most mundane of all. It's just uh, this song. It just goes on and on like this. And the minutes turn into days, and the days into weeks, and the weeks into months, and the months into years. And the years then into decades. And then I see my children die. <laughs> and I see my grandchildren, they die too. And then I see my great, 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 great <laughs> grandchildren. They're being fucked by bastard, that's a bit of a shame, to be honest, that's a low point in the dream. And all the time it's just this song playing like this, just on and on like this, just going on forever like that. And then I realise I'm, I'm sleeping through my alarm, it's like... <laughs> yeah. Third warning about the backstory. A lot of profound messages. How's your life going, mate? It's going well? Yeah. Fine? Well then get out. <laughs> because this is gonna change your entire goddamn life, I swear to God. But I think it's very important to have a profound message. It's everywhere these days. It's in our films, it's in our, in our, our films, our TV shows. It's in our music, it's in our dance music. Not familiar with dance music. I'll take you through the structure of it. So the beginning of every popular dance song, there's a build up in which they talk about music, they talk about dancing, right? And that's fine. But there'll be like a five second pause in which the music will stop They'll say something incredibly profound, and then the music will just continue on like nothing's ever happened. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. So it starts quite gentle like this. It's all like this. Like, okay. Cross on the dance floor, I'm feeling the beat, I'm feeling the music, I'm feeling the heat. The sound of the drums, yeah, is filling the floor. I see you walk. Through a toilet door, cross on the room, yeah, looking at me, looking at you, and my heart starts to beat. This room is on fire, she whispers to me, Oh, how deep is your love? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> how, how deep is your love? I heard that in the middle of a pop and a dance song, and it sent me to an existential crisis. <laughs> I almost crashed the fucking car, lads. <laughs> Take the person you love the most. Like my mum, right? My mum loves me unconditionally. But if I went to my mum's house, deep in the heart of Korea, where I'm originally from, <laughs> the jungles of Seoul, <laughs> where I'm originally from, I went to her house and I said, Mum, how deep is your love for me? She would say, We are not that close, we don't really speak that often <laughs> anymore. Now, deep is your love is such a weird thing to say, such a profound thing to say, and yet had nothing to do with anything else going on that song. But as long as it's profound, it fits a genre of popular dance music. You can put anything in there, and you'd be like, Cross on the dance floor, you look at me, look at you, and my heart starts to beat. This room is on fire, she whispers to me, what happens after we die? Come on. <laughs> Just got it, says, come on now. But here, would you torture to say some money love? <laughs> come on now. Oh, 
I think the only thing worse than hearing dance music on the radio is, of course, watching dance music live at a festival. <laughs> Has anyone here seen a DJ perform live before? Yeah? Why have you seen a DJ perform live before? <laughs> a waste of time, right? Because if, if you see a band at a festival, totally get it, understand completely, right? Because there'll be a drummer there, the drummer will be this and that. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic, yeah. There'll be guitarists there, guitarists there, they'll be doing this again. Calabunga, you know? <laughs> See a DJ perform live, it's like watching someone just stand next to a table for a bit. Here's my impression of a DJ performing live. Here we go. Right, John, right up, please. Here we go. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Here he comes. Wait for it, here he comes. Here we go. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes, wait for it, here he comes. Here he comes, wait for it, here he comes. Some of this, some of this. Bring it back up again, baby, there we go. Here he comes, all right, here he comes. Here he comes, wait for it, here he comes. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Wait for it, here it comes. Shh. 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 Here it comes, wait for it, here it comes. Shh. Shh. Shut up, wait for it, here it comes. Here it comes. Can't see their hands, can't see the table. All I can see is the head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. <laughs> My best friend Mark, he used to be a DJ. He used to be, he couldn't do what he was doing when he was doing it. Half the time he was DJ, half the time he would just find, a, find something in a bag. Just like, <laughs> How deep is this bag? Come on. <laughs> I think the only way to be a long-term successful DJ is to uh, wear a space helmet <laughs> and then just get someone else to DJ for you. That's the only way I would do it. I doubt that Daft Punk have attended one of their gigs in the last 10 years, I'd say that. <laughs> you know? For example, right, one of the members of Daft Punk left Daft Punk, moved to Malaysia, where I'm originally from, Started a family, moved back here, left his son in Malaysia, right? Became Darth Monk, and none of you even noticed. Yeah, I love Adele, you love Adele, we all love Adele. But let's be very clear, if Adele was too poorly to perform, you couldn't just stick someone else on stage in a space helmet. <laughs> that wouldn't do. Like if someone came on and was like, hello, it's me. You'd be like, is it? I will be clear with you, and I was kind of hoping that you'd clap, and that is too late now. No, 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 it's too late now, and this is your fault, but we're gonna be doing head, shoulders, knees, and toes again to get the energy back in the room. And we're gonna be doing my version this time. It's head, shoulders, knees, and toes, but with an extra verse, right? So it's a normal head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and then another verse in which we do every other single part in the body, as it should be. So it's a head, shoulders, knees, and toes song, and then another verse with all the different body parts in it, as it should be. 
But please join in if you know the words. <laughs> Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. and veins and lungs and throats and kidney stones and the tiny voice that tells you not to kill. So, very important. Very important. The tiny voice that tells you not to kill. Without the tiny voice that tells you not to kill, you'd already all be dead. Without the tiny voice that tells you not to kill, that song is just uh, an itinerary. for a murderer. Tell you what, I'll do that again, right, without the tiny voice that tells you not to kill, and you'll slowly start to hear the song turn into a song about two murderers. So here, here we go, here goes. Um, Groin, forearm, hip and skin, calf and wrist, heart, liver, bones and brains, ribs and veins, and lungs and throat, and kidney stones, and the... Begin the backstory very soon. <laughs> You've got to sign NDAs. <laughs> NDAs. You've got to sign NDAs. You know what? Non-disclosure agreement. You've got to sign NDAs. So basically, the backstory. I pitched this at Radio Four, and they were like, "So they bought the rights to the backstory. So basically, you're not allowed to tell anyone what happens in it until it gets released." Which is, which is great. And I, I sort of, I am stoked about the Radio 4 drama, but I'm more stoked at the fact that they were like, you can write your own theme music. Because that's basically all I wanted, to write my own theme music. And I was going through the keyboard, uh, trying to find, you know, like a sort of a Singaporean song, you know, where I'm originally from. And I, and I stumbled across this, this sort of noise. When I, check, check it out, pump it up, John. Um, I found this, what do you think, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Just found that in the keyboard. <laughs> Do you like it? I don't... A couple of people. Some people like it. I will say, I will just keep playing it until you like it. I don't... <laughs> Strange, isn't it? I cannot... I've thought about this every single day for two years. <laughs> What's it doing in the keyboard? <laughs> What's it doing in there? <laughs> to give you context, they recorded that at Yamaha. <laughs> in the booth. They went, oh boys, we've done the organs and we've done the accordion and the guitar and the saxophone and the synth and the percussion and the flutes. What should we, we've got one slot left, what should we put in? Should we put in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Just in case we need that in the orchestra. <laughs> what do you reckon that sound is? So I looked it up in the instruction manual. It's got all the sounds listed on there. What do you think that's listed as? What do you, what do you think it might be? Any, any guesses? Evil laugh. Evil, evil, good guess, good guess. A bit more specific though, you're on the right track though. <laughs> Maniacal laugh? Maniacal laugh, good, more, more, more specific. Joker? Sorry? Joker? Joker? No, he, evil, he's an evil man, it is a person though. <laughs> you're on the right track, even eviler than the Joker, <laughs> if it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Love that film. Sorry? Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson. Political again. <laughs> you should have been here earlier, during the political section, please, honestly. <laughs> He's the reason that the ice creams are so expensive. That's what I heard. <laughs> Anyone, any more guesses? <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> and that's the end of the show, guys. Good, uh, <laughs> no, not a pervert. Um, I, I, okay, well, I feel you'll kick yourselves. It's, you're not going to get it. It's uh, actually an ice cream shop man. <laughs> there he is again, rising. His evil head rearing up. What's well, even stranger, and I've, I will say this, I've not, I've not programmed this keyboard in any way. This has come with a keyboard. 
Right, this one. One steady tone up. Coincidence, I think not. Another semi tone here. That's a shotgun, lads. That's a shotgun. Another one here. Heartbeat. Another one. Little footstep. And what's actually interesting about that, if you reverse that and you close your eyes, you got yourself a very tasty uh, Radio 4 drama about an ice cream truck man serial killer. So here we go. Only one person in the entire room with their eyes closed. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, this is, by a long shot, the worst crowd I've ever played to in my entire life. You don't sing when I tell you to sing. You don't close your eyes when clearly you're struggling. Close your goddamn eyes. You're, you're just sitting there looking at me. That is mad. Don't, don't try and get away. You're looking at me. I'm fucking sick of this crowd. I will, cl you know what, D John? Yeah. I, turn the lights out. I'm sick of looking at them. Turn the lights out. Don't clap. <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean? I don't turn that, I can't, I can still see them. What are all these lights doing that? Put, put these candles out too, turn them all out. Turn them upside down, turn them out. I will have my joke. Yeah, turn them, on, turn them upside down. Turn, listen, you're a smart crowd. There we are, cool, brilliant. So this is a, a Radio 4 drama about an ice cream truck man serial killer. Here we go. So it's this. Let me just... I can't find that. <laughs> John, can I get the lights just for one... just for one quick second here? Jo John? Oh, that's working again. Oh, it just needs to be louder, I think. Can you hear that, guys? Yeah, yeah, cool. Turn the lights out. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ice cream truck man serial killer. Here we go. All right, here we go. So we've done, so we're not doing the musical. We're doing, uh, doing the backstory, reinvented myself, done the three warnings, done the NDA. Yeah, I think we're almost ready to, to begin the show, I think. Um, so let me just, hang on, let me just see how much time we've got left, hang on. Oh. The venue shuts in five minutes. Um, tell you what, I've, I think the best thing to do at this point would just be to wait in the dark until it finishes. I think uh, I prefer it that way, you know. Um, but uh, hmm. I guess the message of the show is uh, don't trust anyone, especially if they're in a van. I'd say maybe I'm just saying the next time you meet someone, just be careful. You don't know who they could be. Take me, for example. You've been with me for an hour, and you've learned absolutely nothing. <laughs> All you know is that I had a best friend who used to be a DJ, and I reinvented myself. And yes, I've been stalling for about 55 minutes. And yes, I do think it's a nice surprise at the end of the show. There's a payoff. You don't even know you're watching Darth Monk <laughs> until the beat kicks in. This tuna wedding, I'm Dark Monk. We have gathered here today with Lancastrians. 
to celebrate this wedding with some folks from York. It's a Tudor resolution to the Hundred Years' War. We just currently honed at the War of the Roses. Yeah, it's not very funny, but at least we are learning. Welcome to this Tudor wedding in a church. There are nibbles and drinks around the church, around the church. Tudor wedding and Daft Punk 17 years ago since I left Daft Punk No longer best friends cause Daft Punk is daft Yeah Daft Punk is a racist and his name is Mark But Mark won't spoil this Tudor wedding It's the last day of rest and there'll be no beheadings The husband and the wife will be up all night Yeah they'll be up all night but they'll be keeping it holy We're now in the build up of this dance song. So thank you for coming. You've waited so long to hear my exhausting backstory. Because I'm different to you. You're different to me, and I am an Asian. Ask me where I'm from. I'll be so profound in the gap of this song. I'll tell you a sad Asian backstory. Would it be easy for you to grow up in a country with no home, no money? Would it be easy for you? To raise your entire family from the age of 12 after your dad left you for a better life in a faraway country. Satisfied? Feeling sorry for me? <laughs> well, don't feel sorry for me. They don't say sorry to me. Say sorry to my son that I've left in Malaysia. <laughs> Hit it! <laughs> Thank you very much.